The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the open of the prison to them that are bound. Father God, anoint me to preach your word, Lord. I can't do anything without you. Come down, speak, take me over. May Jesus be glorified and exalted in all that I do. Jesus' name, amen. The word of the Lord today is, Do all that God says when God says it. Everybody say to me, Do, do all, all that God says, God says when, when God, says it. God says it. Turn to 1 Samuel 15, the 22nd verse. This word of the Lord is, is, is coming with a process of two dreams. Two dreams. There was a young boy came in the church last week Thursday. His name is Shamar, Brother Sheldon Evans' son. And he told me he had a dream with me where he saw me fighting a demon. The demon's name is first Samuel 15, 20, 22. The demon's name was Pathos. Pathos, pity. Yes. Pity. Now, he said, I was not anointed enough to deal with the demon. And I was cursing the demon and in the blood but the demon was not moving and then I screamed out God aren't you God and he said God said no two times moved his hand from heaven bam hit the demon and the demon ran then he said that God wanted me to work on the billboard Bible but I was doing something else and he he said that I started to do the billboard Bible and then more people started to come to, to the billboard Bible and then he said that God began to bless me mightily he told me this dream Thursday night. Now, I, I haven't been doing the billboard Bible because it's been cold. You know, where we take the projector on the street, it's cold. So I haven't been doing it. But he said, God said he told me to do it. And God did tell me to do it. I had a dream with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Father told me to do this. And Sunday morning, I had another dream. And in the dream, I saw T.D. Jakes. We were like at a conference. And he was off by himself. And I was with another group. And he sent somebody to tell me to pray. When he told me to pray, I prayed quickly. And I prayed a short prayer. And then one of the young women, she was offended. Because she said, how is he going to tell you to pray? And you are not one of us. So I said in the dream, you must do what God tells you to do when God tells you. And this is how, and I woke up, and, and then I connected it with the Billboard Bible. I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning and ran and did the Billboard Bible. <laughs> 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> because I was afraid. Because God had given a little boy a dream to tell me he wants to do the Billboard Bible. Then he's giving me that word about you must do all that God wants you to do when God tells you to do it. Amen. And I woke up and I was afraid. And five o'clock in the cold in the morning, I go out. And funny enough, I met a man. Uh, he had just come from jail. And God allowed me to minister to him in the five o'clock in the morning. And the Bible was being shown. And now 
almost every day I'm out there with it I am afraid not to do it because God is speaking me to, 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 to go forth with this billboard Bible amen and he has given me all that I need hallelujah and so what God says he is the boss what, what he says I must do it and so today we bring this word in 1 Samuel 15 22 and he's, the word of the Lord says and Samuel said hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams go to 22 Re read it in uh, French Samuel 22 mm -hmm. ah. Amen. God delights when you obey his voice. So for him to tell the thirteen year old boy then to tell me again in a dream Sunday I was afraid because God is not do this, do this, do this no one time move amen hey, you children they don't understand this we as men, we, uh, we are, as dads, we tell our children, one, and they don't move right away. What is going on? <laughs> when God speak to me, I must jump. Hallelujah. Amen. And I was afraid. And so I got up early in the morning and I moved. And then the lesson this week, you see, I know when God is speaking to me to do something God wants to give me something amen you know I, I, I asked Thierry friend of mine I said we don't have the experience of Jesus experience in French how do you say experience experience, experience. 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 yes if, if you had Jesus' experience, amen, you would be different. You would be closer to being like Jesus. I have my experience with God. So I know when God, you know, April 7, praise God, is going to be two years that this, we, have this, we have a church. When I start, when we started the church, it was in a basement on Farmers and Linden. We paid twenty dollars for one hour, and we start because God said to start. About two weeks after we start, the owner got evicted. Church shut down. The same week, somebody else, the lady with the daycare, which we don't go yet, she said, "Come have church in our place." Then we find another place on Merrick. Then we come over here. This was a salon. Then God moved and now it's a church. Hallelujah. But all I know is what God is telling me today to do, I must do. All of it. Amen. We just read the Ten Commandments. The Sabbath day is when? Today, Saturday. I must do all of what God says to do. Now, the rich young ruler, everybody remember him? The, the, the rich young ruler. In Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. He was very rich. I'm not, don't go there. He was very rich. He had a lot of money. And Jesus tell him to sell all he had and come and follow him. Couldn't do it. How do you 
the name is the rich. No, I don't know his no. money. Yes, that I know. He had a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just wants a Bible verse. He's oh, Matthew 19. He's referred to as the rich yes. in the But God told him, go and sell all you have. Yes, and follow me. And follow me. And he loved money more than God, so he said no. <laughs> he was a fool. Mm, he was a fool. Some of us are fools though. Because God tells us to tithe. And we don't tithe, we give him a tip. And you're still a fool. Because you don't do all of what God tells you to do. When God tells you to do it. Amen? Amen. When you tell God, when you do all that God says, when God says it, oh my God, look out. That's when Peter, his shadow, touch you. Hallelujah. And you get healed. When God finds somebody that does all of what he says, when he says it, even though you feel tired, you feel sleepy, but God speak to you. Amen. When a man have a wife and whatever he tell his wife to do, and she is doing it. Oh my God. <laughs> when a man have a child, and whatever he tells the child, he's doing it. When a woman have a husband, and whatever she asks her husband for, he is doing it. My God, you, you see what I'm trying to say? Now, the problem is, if you are not doing all that God says, when God says it, you are blind. You can see with your two eyes, but you need glasses. Amen? <laughs> you need to put on your glasses because you cannot see so good. Because <laughs> if you saw the blessing that God had in mind for you, you would do it and do it quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. With my experience now, I don't have to know what God is saying. I just have to know He's saying it. And I know He's telling me to put this Bible forth. Amen? Last night I went out there. I was uh, afraid not to go. Terrified! <laughs> I have to go. Because I know Him. I am getting excited. I don't know what it is. But I know Him. When He speaks like that, He is about to do something. Hallelujah! Achilles had a dream about breakthrough. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is giving instructions. Oh my God. Get ready people. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. God is moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to be so glad that you are in Living Water Church. Amen. Amen. People are going to come in here and you're going to say, excuse me, this is my seat because there's no space. They're going to have to stand up because the power of God is moving in the church. Hallelujah. As long as when God tells us to move. Amen? Amen. You have to say, hey, this is somebody is reserved seat. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm not prophesying. I'm just speaking. God don't tell me that, but I'm saying it. Hallelujah. I just, I'm excited. Because I know God. I have, I have a, I don't have Jesus experience. Hallelujah. Amen. But I have Joshua experience. I remember when I used to think a man could have more than one wife. And God showed me one wife. Then the next week, when I give up multiple wives, he give me his seal in my forehead. One week later. I was worried about money and lands and this, but I was not thinking about the seal of God. Hallelujah. Most times 
when God wants to bless you, he wants he his word is forever. He does not like to, you know, you give an ice cream cone and the ice cream cone melt. God doesn't like to give those kinds of blessings. He wants to give you for a long time. When he bless you. Hallelujah. Now, in 1 Samuel 15, God tells Saul. He, God is giving him a test. Samuel, in verse 1, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord has sent me to anoint thee, to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not but slay both man and woman infant and suckling ox and sheep camel and ass uh, read, read this in French Verse one. 1 to 3 c'est moi que l'éternel a envoyé pour toi voir sur son peuple sur Israël, écoute donc ce que dit l'Éternel. Ainsi parle l'Éternel des armées. Je me souviens de ce qu'Amalek fit à Israël lorsqu'il lui ferma le chemin à sa sortie d'Égypte. Va maintenant, frappe Amalek et dévoué par interdit tout ce qui lui appartient. Tu ne l'épargneras point tu, et tu feras mourir hommes et femmes, enfants et nourrissons, bœufs et brebis, chameaux et ânes. Ok. God is giving him a test. He is giving him a clear test. Amen? Amen. What instructions is God giving you today that you are only doing a part of it? Hmm? We read the Ten Commandments of God. Amen? Look at those commandments. Two things are very important for a Christian. The cross and the commandments. Very important. What is it that God is telling you to do that you are not doing? Or you are doing part of it? Amen? Amen. God is searching. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. My mother, when I was growing up, Gloria Jackson, God bless her, she would tell me, she says, if you, the world has not seen what God will do with one man that is completely dedicated to doing God's will, when you decide that whatever the Lord says to do, you must do it. And do it when he tells you. Watch out! God gave Samuel, Saul instructions to destroy Amalek. Amalek. When the children of Israel were leaving, imagine all of us are traveling. And Sephora and Rosalia is at the back. And somebody come and kill them and take them. That's what Amalek was doing to Israel. They were taking the weak ones, the old ones, and taking them and doing God knows what. And God was angry. And God swore to have war with them. Saul, Amalek were Esau's children. Amalek. And God had spoken a word. And he had said that he would destroy them. So now, Saul is king. And God is giving him a test. Saul goes. He kills. Verse 9, verse 9. 
Verse 8 and 9. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, Amalekites alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Samuel and the people, Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and they refused. That they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Read verse 11, verse 11, in French. Okay. He did part of what God said. Notice something. We must do all. Everybody say all. All. Of what God says. When. God says it. When God says. Now, he did part of what God says when God says it. Amen? Amen. How many of us are doing a part of what God says when God says it? Don't raise your hand. But if you are doing that, you are missing out from the will of God. Amen? Be your destiny is at stake. Amen? Because Saul did not do what God said to do, David eat Saul's food. David receive Saul's destiny. Go to Second Samuel seventeen. You said Second Samuel seventeen. Two. Oh, no, second Samuel, I'm sorry, seven, seven, seven. Second Samuel seven. The destiny of David should have been for Saul. Amen. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to say today? The destiny of David. Because you are not doing all of what God says, when God says it, you miss the opportunity to receive the blessing of David. Uh, Seven sixteen. Fifteen and sixteen. Read in, read in French first. Mais ma grâce ne se retira point de lui, comme je l'ai retiré de Saul, que j'ai rejeté devant toi. Ta maison et ton règne seront pour toujours assurés, ton compte sera pour toujours affermé. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. David's throne is forever. That should have been Saul. You see that theory? If you don't do all that God wants you to do, another man come in your house and eat your food and drive your car. <laughs> 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 
David was in Saul's blessing. Does everyone see this? Do you want what happened to Saul to happen to you? In this church, you know, Jimmy Swaggart right now, he's doing a wonderful thing. He's teaching about the cross. He's teaching about the cross of Christ. The cross is very important. And we teach the cross too. Hallelujah. But we also teach the crowns of Christ. Every week, pastor talking about throne, kingdom, crown. Every week is same message, different. <laughs> Your throne will be forever. My God. He be, because he did a part of what God says. Look at your lives. Are you doing all of what God says when God says it? If your husband tells you to do something now and you do it tomorrow, you are not doing all of what God says. Amen? amen? I should get a loud amen on that one. It's quiet amen. amen. <laughs> ah, the word of God, it cuts both ways. <laughs> it cuts. The husband must love his wife. Hallelujah. If the husband does not love... You know, God showed me this. My daughter, my wife, my mother, my sister, sometimes they have a, a nervous feeling. My job is to take away that nervous feeling and make them feel secure. Make them feel secure. A woman wants to know her man is not moving. He is a rock. He is not going anywhere. When she knows her husband is there for her, no matter what, oh my God, she feels secure. She feels secure. She feels like she is rich. But if she don't know if he stay, if he go, da da. But remember, you seek God. Don't seek the husband. Seek God. Seek to do all of what God wants you to do. When God wants you to do it. Now, we're going to go to Numbers 14. I gotta hurry here. What, 14? Numbers 14. Yes. Numbers 14. Now, this is, everybody say, breach of promise. Of promise. Breach of promise. Of promise. When you don't do all that God says, when God says it, God can breach His promise. Most time God says, if you obey me, I will bless you. In verse 34. 34. Numbers 14. Yes. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall he bear your iniquities, even 40 years, 
and ye shall know my breach of promise. You see that? God has a clause. It's called breach of promise. Hallelujah. In, 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 in the love chapter in Corinthians, it says prophecy shall fail. Somebody prophesy over you. God is going to do this and do that for you. They prophesy. But is if you obey because you did not obey you break the contract. So you experience the breach of promise. Who wants to experience the breach of promise? No, you don't want to experience it. You don't want to experience it. Because that means God is not going to do what he said. Breach of promise. God says if you tithe, I'm going to pour out the blessing from heaven. And you don't do it. But you give him something. And you experience the breach of promise. And then you say, Ah, it's not working. It's slow. But you are not doing what you are supposed to do. When? You are supposed to do it. God tell me to the little boy. I sent you to do the billboard Bible and you're doing other things. My God, then he comes in the morning and say, have me saying the dream. You must do what God says when God, I know this. Now I am afraid not to be doing this every day now. I'm trembling. Trembling, I tremble before God. Because he don't and he tell me two times. This little boy, I am looking at him careful because he's man of God. But he is 13. Little boy. But he is man of God. God giving him word. <laughs> you know, this is why I say in this church, if God gives Sephora or the baby a word. Whoever God speak to, you have to listen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is nobody large and in charge? The only person in charge and is here today is Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. We cry for favor. But when God is speaking to you, it is favor. Yeah. You know, the boy talked about self-pity. The children of Israel... Self-pity is a thief. Is a demon. Because you feel pity, you don't do all of what God wants you to do. You feel, woe is me, I'm sad. Da, da, da. And so you don't do all of what God wants to do. And you experience the breach of promise. Now look at this further down. In the same chapter. 34. Uh, in the same numbers 14. Uh, he says. Which verse? 40 to 45. And they rose up early in the morning. And get them up to the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and we'll go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised. For we have sinned. Look at this. Um, they are they want to do what God says now, but not when God says it. They want to do all that God says, but not when the time I, I used to have a business and you have three different crews like nine men I want one to do something this one to do something this one to do something I have to collect money I have to make payroll they don't see the whole picture 
I am giving you a command which you have to follow so I can have money to pay you. Jesus says I must be about my father's business. Hallelujah. You don't see the whole picture. You just know the part you have to play. Hallelujah. But you must do it when God says it. Now they are coming. They want to go and possess the land now. But God is the bad. is the wrong time. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the Lord, commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up. For the Lord is not among you. Therefore ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you. Remember the Amalekites? Those is who Samuel, who Saul should have killed them. He didn't kill them all. Now they're going to kill them. Are there before you and ye shall fall by the sword. Because ye have turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up onto the hill top. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in the hill and smote them and discomfited them even unto Hormah. I uh, read in French uh, from 40 to 45. Verse four, what was four, yes. Num number 14. Yes, 40, 40 to 45. 40 yes. to 45. Yes. 14 numbers. Parce que vous vous êtes détourné de l'éternel, l'éternel ne sera point avec vous. Ils s'obtiennent à monter au sommet de la montagne, mais l'arche de l'alliance de Moïse ne sortit point du milieu du temple. Alors descendirent les Amalécites et les Cananéens qui habitaient cette montagne, ils les bâtirent et les taillèrent en pièces jusqu'à en bas. Okay, praise God. Let's, let's focus. Come on, let's focus. Here's what I'm saying to everybody. God, you will do what God says, but not when God says it. Amen? The Bible talks, it says uh, in, in Proverbs. You know, I used to know this lady. I met her, at the, I met her on, on, on the street. And... She, she was in a shelter. So I go there to preach. I am not looking for nothing. This woman take $500 and give to me. Offered. I tell her, you live in a shelter, take the money and get a room, get a hotel, get a, get a place to live. She says, you are not man of God. She says, I want big money from God. <laughs> so I am giving big. My wife was there. It, Akilah was there and Stephen was there. We were doing Bible study. Am I telling the truth? Can I get an amen? She called me. She says she's going to cash her check. She works as a nurse. She says, come with me to the currency exchange. When I cash my check, I want to give you the offering first. I said, wow. She won a tithe. For, I don't know where she is now. I can't tell you that she experienced her breakthrough. I don't know. But I know this woman read the Bible. And she took it serious. And she says she had big money and she wants it again. And this is how she's going to deal with God. She taught me many things, and I, 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 I miss her, and I don't know where she is now, but uh, Sister Pittman, God bless you. But she would not play. You know, Solomon and David, they were not stingy with God. Amen? Amen. They were generous with God. A, 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 a stupid man is stingy with his wife. 
<laughs> Can I get an amen on that one? Amen. <laughs> a stupid man is stingy with his wife. And a stupid wife is stingy with her husband. Hallelujah. What is stingy? I you don't share. So don't don't share. You don't share. You don't give. You don't give. You don't give. And a foolish man is stingy with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And remember, I tell you this. If you don't have money, bring your words to God. God, you are so sweet. You are my valentine. I love you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, bring your words to him. Even, even if, you know, sometimes you're talking to a woman, you don't have money, you just have words. And she take you with no money but your words. Hallelujah. Amen. God can be the same way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God, Mia. You know what you have. Hallelujah. Amen. So they went, but they didn't go at the time. All that God says, do all that God says. Everybody say, do all, do all that God says, God says when God Says it. I'm going to close with this. Luke 22. I want to take the focus onto Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray the name of Jesus. And Jesus, he did all that God said when God said it. Jesus is the only one that did all of what God says when God says it. And he said in him, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Living water church, I want us to be a church that does all that God says when God says it. You know, our church, we have a lot of love. We are looking out for each other. Hallelujah. We are working together. Amen. And believe me, you are very important to God. And we must but we must do what God says when God said, Akilah have the dream about breakthrough and I receive it for us. That we will enter into breakthrough. Not just one person, but as a church. Hallelujah. And it is very important. Because I don't want this breach of promise. God said, if. Abraham, he said, I swear I'm going to do this for you. But Israel, he said, if. <laughs> do you see it? God is telling us, if. If. And then you don't do it, so you don't get it. Now, Luke 22, 42-41. And when he was at the... Say it in, uh, in French first. Do it in French first. 40. Yes. 40 through 44. Luke or root? Luke, 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 Luke. I'm going to read. I want to root. I read? Yeah, go ahead. 22, 40 through 44. Get back. Lorsqu'il fut arrivé dans ce lieu, il leur dit Priez afin que vous ne tombiez pas en tentation. Puis il s'éloigna d'eux à la distance d'environ un jet de pierre et s'étant mis à genoux, il pria, disant Père, si tu voulais éloigner de moi cette coupe, je crois que ma volonté ne se fasse pas, mais la tienne. Alors un ange lui apparut du ciel pour le fortifier. Étant à Gonit, il priait plus instamment et sa sueur devint comme Okay. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. We, last week, I think a week before, I said we must pray before at the day beginning that we do not sin. Amen? We must learn to slow down time. Don't worry about tomorrow so much. Focus on today. Hallelujah. Do all that God wants me to do today. Hallelujah. And you see, this is why the Sabbath day is a special day. We must prepare our clothes before the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we should not be ironing on Saturday. Praise God. And we really need to prepare lunch before. Not be buying on Saturday. We do. God forgive us. Well, but you know, we need to prepare. Hallelujah. Do better. And... 
he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. Not my will but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. God is telling Jesus, no. And Jesus prayed more. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You know, I see Jesus like a truck. Remember me? He's drawing gears in prayer. How many of you know how to draw gear in prayer? Loretta, you know how to draw gear in prayer. I know you can pray. I know Loretta can pray. She cried. <laughs> she, you, when you're driving, bam, 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 you, you, boom, change gear in prayer. That's what Jesus did. He, the angel they coming down. And Jesus said, uh, more. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you have to pray to do all that God says when God says it. Amen. Right now I am mad at myself that God had to talk to me two times. I am mad at myself. You know, it's like a student. Uh, some students, they get a B, they upset. When you're in school, if you get B, you're mad. Mm -hmm. You want straight A's, hallelujah. Amen. God have to tell me twice. I am mad at myself right now. He must only talk to me one time, hallelujah. I'm giving excuse. It's cold, God. I can't do Billboard Bible right now. God said, what is wrong with you? Get to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, thank you for your mercy, God. And if you remember, if you are not doing all of what God says when God says it, pray and say mercy. Hallelujah. Mercy. But remember, he will give you mercy. But you might miss your destiny. You Can you imagine Saul in hell? Because he went to the witch. He went to the witch of Endor. Can you imagine Saul in hell? And he look up and he see David. I'm going to, I, should, I said I was going to close with that. But I'm going to close. Bear with me one second. Isaiah, the last. Verse in Isaiah. Look at this. 66. The last verse in Isaiah. Last few verses in Isaiah. Some people are like, why are we keeping the Sabbath? Hebrews 4 is there. Hebrews 4 says that. To fear. But hear what the Lord says. 66. Read it in French first. Read, for, read it in French. 23 and 24. Isaiah 66. Yes, 23 and 24. Mm -hmm. Yes. In French? No, I think no, no. Let let let, uh, let Georgina read it. In French. All right, Akila, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, this is in heaven, everybody. Hallelujah. This is after Judgment Day. It shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another. They keep in the Sabbath after we die and we in paradise. You see this? All flesh come to worship. David going to come and worship. Then he's going to look down and they shall go forth and look upon the car. He's going to look at Saul. Saul going to look at David. <laughs> you understand me? And Saul could have been, David is going to be in a throne. Saul is in hell burning. 
Just because he did part of what God says when God says it. Now this message today is not a message of grace. Grace says Jesus died for me. Hallelujah. So by false, I can come under the blood of Jesus. So today as I am about to close, I want to invite somebody to accept Christ. If you've never heard this message before, accepting Christ. Romans 10 and 9, the Bible says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Save my soul from the fire of fire of hell. Amen. We invite you to come to 202 Linden. Check out listenbible.com. Join with us to build billboard Bibles in every language of the world. Amen.